So today I'm going to be going through this problem, so let's read it. A solid sphere of radius r contains a total charge q distributed uniformly throughout its volume. Find the energy needed to assemble this charge by bringing infinitesimal charges from far away. This energy is called the self-energy of the charge distribution. Okay, so I know that can seem intimidating when you first read it, so let's just talk about uh, what this question is actually trying to get us to do. And so we have a, a sphere, let's pretend it's a perfect sphere. Um, so the radius of the sphere is r, and it has a total charge distribution q. And I'll just do some shading to show that it's 3D. And so what we're saying is that we're going to treat this sphere as a series of point charges and that we're asked to find the amount of work that we'll need to do to move all of these point charges through space to form up this sphere. And so with that in mind, we're probably going to need a equation that deals with u, um, that is the energy, and that deals with q, that is the charge. And then besides that, in these problems, we always either deal with the electric potential V or the electric field E. And so we're going to need uh, an equation that relates some of these together. And so one equation that we have that does, though, that, does that relationship is V equals U over the charge. And so with this relationship, uh, we can see the electric potential and the uh, energy of the um, object are related here, and so we can probably use this to find our U. And we know in these types of questions that uh, we usually treat these things as these little particles called dQ, and so we're going to need a dQ in this equation, and if we're taking uh, a dq here, we're going to need a du up here because we're differentiating this whole side of the equation. And so that's where we're going to start off. And then what we're going to do is say, okay, well, we are looking for u though, because we're looking for the energy. Um, and so we're going to need to isolate for u. So we can say that v dq is equal to du. And then we're also going to say, well, this is du, not u. We just want the energy. And so how do we get rid of this d? And the answer to that is we're going to have to integrate. And so if we integrate this, then that'll get rid of the du, and this will simply just be equal to u. And so uh, if we can somehow uh, get this equation uh, to work with us, we can find the energy uh, u. And so one thing that we know about the potential, right, is that potential for a point charge is given by this formula. And here I'll use big R because that's what the question gave us up here. And so we know that this is the potential for a point charge, which we usually just think of as a dot. But I'm going to say, what about if we make that dot, if we just expand it, then it becomes a circle which is exactly what we're dealing with here. So you can see that this um, equation will actually fit very nicely with this, sphere, with this sphere shape here. And so if we work with that then, um, we can say, I'm just gonna clean that up. If we're using this relationship here, what we're gonna need to do is say, okay, I can put this in now for my V here. So we can write the integral of k q over r times dq is equal to u, right? And we're going to say, okay, but we need something to replace this dq here because uh, like we talked about in the previous videos, we can't really integrate uh, over dq. And we're also going to need something to replace this q here uh, because like I also said, q isn't a constant, and also uh, we're trying to sum up all of these little point charges, so it just isn't going to uh, work out for us if you think about it in the context of the problem. And so usually in these situations, what we can do is say that the volumetric density or the surface density 
the linear density. In this case, it's volumetric density, which is the charge over the volume. And I'll just write vol to differentiate it from this V. Um, and we can play around with this to get something to replace our dq. And we know that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed, right? And so what about if we just differentiated uh, this whole equation with uh, respect to q? And we know that this is a constant and pi and 4 over 3 are constants, so it's going to have to be with respect to r. So I'm just going to rearrange this to make doing that a bit easier. And so now let's take the uh, derivative with respect to r. And these threes will cancel. And what we're going to get is um, this equation, which I will write up here. Uh, sorry, there should be a 4 there. And I'll write my dr on this side because we will be substituting in for dq. So that's our one equation, right? And I'm just going to erase this guy. Okay. And so that's our one equation here, and uh, we can put that in for here. And then in terms of our q, well, we, we already did that step here. We got this equation. And so these are really going to be our two key equations here and here that we can use uh, to solve this problem. And so just going back to our um, what we're trying to attain here, um, we can sub these in and then we're going to need to integrate it so why don't we talk about bounds now and so in terms of bounds remember that the integral is the sum of all of the particles in this sphere is what we want the integral to be and so if we just start at zero at a measurement of zero uh, up in the center of the circle and we go out a distance r the full radius we are going to uh, be integrating over the whole volume of the sphere. And so if we go from 0 to r, we are going to end up summing up all of these small dqs that constitute this sphere here. And so that's why we can choose our bounds to be 0 and r. And so if we just sub all of that in, you know, we can go 0, r, k over r, and then I'll write the q. And then this dq here. And that is, of course, going to be equal to our u. And I probably should have color coded this, but um, I forgot to, so sorry about that, guys. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, uh, so this looks kind of messy. Can we simplify this at all? And I'm going to say yes, we can. So first of all, we can cancel out an r, and let's just do this r for simplicity. And then we're also going to be able to take out all of our constants in this equation from the integral, because that's a uh, integral property, right? And so we can take out k. We can take out this uh, 4 here. And we actually have another 4 there, so that's going to be 4 squared. And then we have a pi there and a pi there, so that's going to be pi squared. And then we have a row here and a row there, so we can take out those rows. And then um, I think that's pretty much it. And we can also take out this 3 here from the bottom. And so I'll just write that here, actually. And then we can also take out this k as the last guy. 
And so then we still have this R2 and this R2, so that's going to be R4. Oh, sorry, I can get rid of, um, or no, I can't get rid of that yet. We need our integral still going from 0 to R for R4. And we still have our dr in there. And so now we're going to need to do the integral. So I'm also going to clean up this side, just rearrange it a bit more neatly. And then we can write that the integral of r4 is r5 over um, 5. There we go. And so this is a uh, this is a nice expression, you know. But the question gave us r and q's, and we should be nice to the question. So we should return the same value or the same variables that we had in the question in our answer. So um, we should try and uh, clean this up a bit so that we can get a q there. And oftentimes with this type of stuff, you can look back at the other work that you've done and um, try to get to a place where you can get a get the variable that you're looking for, which in this case, we're looking for Q. So we can look to this guy and say, okay, well, let's try and get this equation here. Let's try and get this equation. And so I'm just gonna make some space for myself here uh, by deleting all of this stuff. And we're almost there. And so now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to move it up there. Okay, great. And so now just talking about this, this is equal to our u. Let's just write that. And then we're going to need to try and get this somehow. And so if you look, we have a few things here. You know, we have um, we have an r, but it's an r5. We have a 4, a 3, a pi. There's a pi. Uh, there's a row, there's a row, there's no k, but that's okay because we can just factor that out. Um, and so what I'm going to propose is that we multiply this by r. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because I notice here we have r3, and this guy is r5. But if we can get in r6, 3 goes into 6 two times. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So then we can um, distribute this over um, to this uh, portion of our equation. And then if you'll notice, we have a square of each of these variables that we need. And so we can actually uh, have two Q's it's gonna look like or something like that. The math will show us once we get there. And so let's just keep going with that for now. Um, the other thing I notice is about this three here, we only have one three here. So what about if I just what about if I factor out a 3 um, from this equation? And so that means that this is going to have to be a square because if I um, were to multiply this back in, this 3 would cancel and that 2 would cancel. And so let's factor out a 3 there so that we can get a square. And then what will actually end up happening is we'll have, oh, I'll write that 3 in uh, yellow again is that we're going to have a equation that looks like this. So 4 squared, pi squared, rho squared, and then we're going to have, um, we can say, an r3 and an r3. I'll just split this r6 up. And then we can write that over 3 squared, 5r. Right? And so we have that here. And so now what we're going to say is, okay, well, this looks pretty similar to this guy. You know, we can take, we can take um, this portion right here and do something with it because we have a 4, we have a 3, we have a pi, we have a square, and we have an r cubed. And so uh, and with this guy here, we can actually do that twice. And so we can write
squared because we actually have two of these terms multiplied together. And then we still have this 5r here. Oh, and sorry, I forgot to bring out the k when I was doing that. The k is going to come out. And so we're going to have a 5r here. And so what we're going to end up with is this, and we're going to say, oh, look, that's nice. It gave us our cube. And so then we can say that we have 3k, and this is just q, so we can square it over 5r. And sure enough, that's going to be our answer for this question. So um, that's really all that I have for you guys today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and that it helped you guys. So keep doing the practice problems. Keep doing... Um, all of the homework that you're assigned, and you should be good. So, yahoo! Woo!